Calorimetry. This is supplemental material that is not on the AP Physics 2 exam. Consider the cup of water shown below. If it takes an amount of heat Q to raise the temperature of the water to 20 degrees Celsius, which it would be a change of temperature, delta T, of 10 degrees Celsius, it would take 2Q to raise its temperature 30 degrees. Therefore, the change in temperature would be 20 degrees Celsius. Heat required is directly proportional to the change in temperature. Consider the cups below. Number one contains half the mass of water as cup number two. If it takes an amount of heat Q to raise the temperature of cup number one by delta T, it will take two Q to raise the temperature of cup number two by the same amount. Heat required is directly proportional to the mass as well as the change in temperature. Consider the objects below. A cup containing a mass M of water and a piece of copper of mass M, both at 10 degrees Celsius. Experiment tells us that it takes less heat to raise the temperature of the copper than the water by the same amount. Heat required depends on the nature of each substance. The quantity that adjusts per substance is called the specific heat, C. So Q is directly proportional to mass, specific heat, and change in temperature. If we rearrange this equation to solve for C, we would divide both sides by m delta t. So it follows that the units for specific heat are joules over kilograms Celsius. Here is a table of different substances and their specific heats. Notice that water has the highest heat capacity in the table. Challenge, can you find a material with a higher heat capacity? Note, metals have much lower heat capacities than water, so it takes less heat to raise the temperature of a mass of metal than it takes to raise the same mass of water by that same temperature difference. Then, two equal masses of water at different temperatures are mixed together. What is the equilibrium temperature Tf, where F stands for final? Well, initially, this water is 90 degrees Celsius and that water is 10 degrees Celsius. They're going to mix together. The heat is going to flow from one into the other. Therefore, the net change in heat is going to be zero since all of the heat lost from the warm water is going to be gained by the cold water. We're also going to use the fact that Q equals mc delta T, where delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. We're going to combine these together to solve for final temperature. All right, so we have the heat lost from the 90 degree Celsius water plus the heat gained by the 10 degrees Celsius water. Well, that's going to add up to zero, right? The, the heat lost from this one is going to be gained by the other. So they're going to be equal to each other, but one will be the negative. So we have MC delta T for the hot water plus MC delta T for the cold water equal to zero. What is the M and C are the same for both. So imagine we could move that to the other side, divide both sides by MC, right? They're, it's the same mass and the same substance. So MC gets canceled out. We get T final minus initial temperature, right? Delta T is final minus initial for the hot water. Plus we have the final temperature minus the initial of the cold water. And then we just algebraically solve for T final, and we get 50 degrees Celsius. And that makes sense, right? That's the average of those two numbers. Since the amount of each temperature water is the same, it makes sense that you end up with the middle temperature.